Hello, this is the Nick and Sean podcast. This is Sean. This is Nick. And today we're going to be reviewing One Crazy Something. Another film by Savage Steve Holland. Savage Steve Holland. All right, this one came out a year after the movie we reviewed last week, which was 1986. This one has John Cusack. Uh, they switched out the, the French girl for Demi Moore. And what are your just what, what are your first thoughts on this? Uh, you liked the Better Off Dead. I liked Better Off Dead. Now having watched it, what do you think about this one? Um, I think let's try to make the same movie in the same way, but make it like a variant, like a like a partner in crime. <laughs> let's talk about all the things that are the same about the two movies. First off. But they both have John Cusack. I think the the crazy radio contest guy was equivalent to Asian guys with the uh, megaphone. So the ski race in the first movie. Uh, by the way, we watched Better Off Dead last week. If you haven't listened to that one, maybe listen to that one or skim through it. I don't know. Then come back, listen to this one. It'll make a lot more sense. So he skis in the first one so that he can win the girl. In this one, they have a boat race. And in both situations, there's really, it's not a movie about boat racing. So they're just like, oh yeah, by the way, now there's a boat race. That's how the movie approaches everything. It's like a, oh yeah, by the way, this is also a thing that there's happens. There's another contest at the very end, right? It's yeah, right, and, 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 and in that contest, he wins the girl. He uh, wins the girl in like a different way though, because she like, she hated him for a different reason. Something about a trophy and then like a grandmother's house which, Happy Gilmore had a much better grandma's house story than this one. Uh, Demi Moore, uh, first off, John Cusack's name's Hooped. Hoops? Hoops. Hoops. Like basketball hoops? Oh, hoops. Hoops. All right, and then in the first movie, they had uh, this top hat guy. And that guy is also in this movie. But the weird thing about this movie is they also have Bobcat. And Bobcat and the top hat guy are comedically tonally exactly the same. They're the wacky side character. This movie had f like five wacky side characters, whereas the, f the f Better Off Dead had just the, the top hat guy. I don't know what his name is. I'm not gonna look it up. I don't have time for that. <laughs> and so to have like all these characters constantly trying to have funny bits and funny moments. I mean, I, Bobcat Goldthwait is, how do you say? He's... He has Are a very specific brand of comedy uh, that is sometimes funny and sometimes it's too much. And this movie gives Bobcat way too much. He's literally in way too many scenes. Every time he came on screen, I was like, fuck, it's fucking Bobcat again. What do you think? I don't know. Yeah, it was kind of annoying after a while. But like, uh, like there were so many comedic side characters and none of them had anything. Oh. I, his, so his main best friend, I don't even know who his, what his character is supposed to be, but he keeps getting like buried up to his neck in the sand underneath a lawn chair that a fat guy keeps sitting in and f farting. All right, so I, I just wish we had, I want to know more about this movie because it's so weird to me that they can have same writer, same director. Is it the same writer? I know it's the same director, same, um. basically the same cast. They cast everybody except for the females in this movie. Uh, he has like, even the mom is, is a different cast member. Like it's, it's not the same as the mom in the first one, but she does the same thing. So these movies are so close to being, it's like they wanted to do a sequel and then they were like, but what if we just make it a different movie? And that's what they did. Yep. So <clears throat> get, I guess we should get to the plot. So Hoops, so Hoops is going to college um he graduates high school and then he's going to college i guess or he's like going on his like summer vacation he goes on his vacation oh it's one crazy summer it's a summer vacation yeah okay and then he they go to this island which this island is i guess for rich people i guess there's probably islands that rich kids go to in the summer anyway but there's so many weird things so there's like radio host uh, and an uncle who's trying to win a lottery the whole movie that doesn't really go anywhere. There's a bunch of just 80s cliches of just like the biker gangs chasing them and then they do like a water jump onto a ferry and, and they find Demi Moore in a men's bathroom and she's stuffed a bunch of bills into the... The problem with this is the movie 
wasn't as it didn't like stick to the ribs as much as uh, Better Off Dead. Right? Like, like there's I a lot can't. of bits. Yeah. And I'm like, so Demi Moore for some reason has money. She has it shoved in a what are those things in the bathroom? The paper towel racks. And and then those biker. So Hoops walks into the bathroom. I'm gonna call him Hoops. He walks into the bathroom. And uh, he doesn't know Demi's in there. He's peeing. Biker Gang shows up. By the way, worst dressed biker gang ever. The main biker guy has this ridiculous hair. He, uh, he has like this weird pink. Yeah, they were like punks, I guess. I guess they were like punk bikers. Punks, yeah. And so. Then he jumps into a river. <laughs> he jumps into a Just like. Water. No, oh, that's what it was. They did the. They did the. They were being chased, and so they tried to jump to the ferry. By the way, uh. I don't live near a ferry. You know, I've never taken a ferry or having to drive a car onto a ferry. I'm pretty sure that if you jumped a car with the velocity to make it from the pier onto the boat, it would probably damage the boat and your car. I'm just saying, probably a thing Hollywood never talks about. And they wouldn't just let you ride the ferry. They'd have to turn that shit around and dock it because you just did damage to the, anyway. Uh, so now they're on the way to the island. They get to the island. Um, there's oh, like, and that's where I discovered that I had already seen this movie after like telling everybody I hadn't seen it. And oh, yeah. You hadn't seen it. You just forgot about it. It's basically the same thing. I understand why you saw this movie and forgot about it. Because unless I had to like literally write down all of this stuff, if you'd asked me today what happened in that movie, I would not be able to tell you. And that's what goes back. It's, it's baffling to me that like... Yeah, this first movie got it right. They were like, it's silly and weird. But again, uh, Better Off Dead just is funnier. Uh, I actually laughed several times during that movie. I only laughed during one scene. I guess they're filming a movie on this island, right? They get to the island and like the first thing they see, two guys, one of them's Bobcat, the other one, um, I don't remember his name, but it's Bobcat's brother. Bobcat's name in this is Egg. <laughs> I was like, Nick, is this, did they say his name was Egg? And, and yeah, sure enough. It was written on his shirt earlier. So they're both annoying. They're they're not fun characters that I want to spend any time with. In fact, I wanted them to get away from me as quickly as possible. And we you know what I just thought about? I don't think John Cusack was in this movie very much. As, as much maybe as. they maybe John Cusack's career exploded and they wanted to make a sequel, but they only had him for like Kind of like what they did with, like, the guy from National Lampoon's Vacation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. They, so they spend more time with other characters so that they don't have to film, spend as much time filming, like, the main star. Like, they end up in other movies that are supposed to be amazing, but they turn out to be, like... Not as good. <clears throat> like, just... Oh, like, Chevy Chase just... Fu like, yeah, I've watched a lot of Chevy Chase movies that, like, have Chevy Chase and it isn't good. Yeah, Chevy Chase, that's what it was. Who else does that? I mean, like, I mean, Nicolas Cage, he just makes any bad movie good. So that's like the exception that proves the rule on that. But no, that, that happens. And th whatever kind of like energy and creativity was in the first one, I feel like was kind of missing from this. And that's really disappointing because I really wanted to be like, dude, the second one's even better. And it's not, it's uh, demonstrably worse. Uh, what was with the eighties and these wacky? Are we 80s? to are we to the pl part where the girl? Sure. His girl is playing music and he's watching, like taking the oh. money from yes. everybody. Yeah, that was weird. So yeah, they have this whole thing where like John, I don't even remember what. Oh, he went on a date with this blonde girl. So much happening in this movie, and none of it matters. So I'm just skipping through so much more than I did in the first review. Again, there's another blonde haired bad guy, another Biff character. Um, and you know, his first, it's all about his car, his cars, don't touch my car. He almost beats up John Cusack after almost hitting him with a car. So we know he's a baddie. And then he has this girlfriend who's, um, she's a very promiscuous girl, right? So for some reason she starts hitting on John Cusack, even though she's dating like the richest and, uh, whatever, you know, <laughs> the guy problem, on the island. The problem with, so it's the same plot. The problem with explaining this movie from the beginning to the end is that so many things happen in between moments. But like, they're not, they don't, they don't push the story forward. Do yeah. you know what I mean? There's, there's like comedy and then there's cause and effect. You need to have the balance of both. You can't just have random scenes one after the other. They have to be leading somewhere. I think there's actually a couple of those scenarios there's, that never played out to their, to their conclusion. Maybe. 
But, Maybe. I mean, there was one gag that, like, I did think was funny, and it did include Bobcat, as much as I've been complaining about Bobcat Goldthwait 30 years after he was famous. Um, by the way, this, these movies both came out, like, three years before we were born. Yep. Um, so, these aren't new movies. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, there's a movie. That, uh, Bobcat and his brother, who are twins that don't look alike... I guess that was supposed to be funny. It's not. Sometimes twins don't look alike. They have, they work on a film set and so they have access to all these props and then they get left in charge of watching, okay, they get left in charge of watching John Cusack because John Cusack is out with the, the Biff guy's girlfriend and the Biff guy is, is at, uh, is at uh, uh, his father's meeting and his father wants to build a house on Demi Moore's grandmother's property and Demi Moore is in love with John Cusack, and John Cusack is in love with Demi Moore, but he still goes out with this blonde girl because he can't stay away from her because she like literally shows up at his door, and he was like, oh, I wasn't gonna go out with her, but then he does. And then... I'm actually impressed at how you explain all that. And then Bobcat is told to watch for the boyfriend and not to touch the movie props. And I literally wrote down, the second I heard that, Bobcat's gonna uh, touch the movie props. So, uh, two minutes later, no, and there's like a whole scene that happens before that. They come back to Bobcat. Of course, he's going through the movie props. And then he finds this Godzilla outfit. So he puts on the Godzilla outfit. And um, my laptop fucks up. All right. <laughs> he puts on the Godzilla outfit. He goes to, he, he, he can't get it off. Of course he can't because in, you know, it, it's, it's comedy. So he, he goes stomping around. He finds himself somehow... At this meeting that the Biff guy's father's having, uh, where they've built this little miniature um, set. Because the guy wants to build like a hotel on all these people's property. He's already bought up all the property. Classic story, except for this one grandma, and that's Demi Moore's grandma. And so he's like, I'm going to build my hotel. And he has a little, uh, like an Asian guy standing next to him. And I'm assuming he's Japanese, because the joke doesn't work if he's not. And they're having this little meeting. And I hadn't put the pieces that they set up together. And what happens is Bobcat skulking around, watching the Biff character, making sure he's set at the party. And then an old guy in a wheelchair drives by. And that old guy in a wheelchair. So the old man is, uh, he's played by uh, William Hickley, who's, he's one of those people that you've seen in, in a bunch of films, but you don't know his name. Uh, he's the grandfather in well, National Lampoon's uh, Christmas uh, Vacation. He's been in everything. He's way too good to this, for this movie. As many uh, famous people that are in this movie, I saw him and I was like, you shouldn't be in this movie. <laughs> Dude, talk to your agent. You're better than this. So anyway, he drives by in a wheelchair. So right now we're gonna do a review of Pepe Lopez. Okay. No, we're not. I'm getting to this joke. So anyway, uh, Bobcat gets the cigar thrown into the Godzilla mouth. And he comes out of the bushes because the God, you know, because his mouth is now on fire. And it's Godzilla. And he's like going, ah, because it's Bobcat. And then he like walks over this small town that the uh, real estate guy, the, the grandfather or the father of Biff has set up. And then the little. <laughs> the father of Biff? He's not Biff. He's really? Biff. He's Biff. I've been calling him Biff for like 20 minutes. Uh, so the, the, the father of Biff is mad. And he um, he turns to the to the Asian guy, and the Asian guy is like he's like oh good party. The the Nick's checking his notes because he doesn't remember any of this movie. I do. I, do I not, don't. If I didn't I am have not a fan of one crazy. Song. If I did not have these notes in front of me, I I would be completely like I said. I'd be just. I'm never watching that movie again. If anybody needs a copy of it, of One Crazy Summer, Nick's got your back. I'm just curious. I like. I want to know so much more because I didn't laugh at. There was there were things that were funny oh. that like I just laughed on the inside. Oh, oh uh, yeah, hot blonde. Okay, so the first time that they leave the friend in the sand uh, to go hang out with the hot girls on the beach, the hot girls, uh, Biff's girlfriend, comes up and is like, "Hey, hoops." Uh, come help us put our boat in the water. So he goes and he helps them put the bill the boat in the water. But they had their friend buried up to the neck in the sand. That made me laugh. I was like, ah, that's pretty funny. But then they took the joke like so much further after that. Do you think movies stop making sense sometimes? But like, 
They're supposed to for some reason. There was a basketball challenge. Oh, man. Demi Moore had to save them. And apparently at some point, John Cusack had told Demi Moore that he was good at basketball. I don't remember this. I didn't make a note about that. I believe it didn't happen. Maybe it did happen. Maybe it happened off screen. Maybe I was just so bored I wasn't paying attention. So they have this challenge where she's like, he's the best sportsman here. And the Biff guy's like, whatever, we'll have a basketball challenge. So they take the guy who played the top hat guy from Better Off Dead and they put him on a pole and they have him hold his arms out like a basketball poop. A basketball poop. A basketball hoop. And Nick made the comment that like he could tell that the ball that they were using in the shot where they throw it at him wasn't really a basketball. And that makes sense because you don't want to hit somebody in the face with a basketball to shoot a movie. It didn't, it, I have written here, it's stupid and it was pointless. And they find out that he can't play basketball. And that doesn't solve any of the problems that they were dealing with at the time in the movie. They just wanted to beat him up. It wouldn't have mattered if he, if he played basketball well. They still would have just tried to beat him up. So they end up running off. Oh, she maces him. She had maced this entire time. She took the time to let them string up one of her friends as a basketball hoop. And just to praise her boyfriend, who she thought was really good at basketball. And then she's like, uh, something, she said something quippy. Like, have you ever met something? And he was like, no. And they're like, I have, it makes mace. I don't, it was a bad joke. And then there was like this movie. I don't know. And then there was the third act breakup that happened in the middle of the set. Remember when I was in the last review? Demi Moore should be locked up for playing music. No, I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, she really should. She's, she was bad. The music was really bad. It's The music is so just made. It was proper music, but the lyrics were just stupid. It was, the, it was quintessential background 80s music. If it was in it. Like if they had just rolled it during the credits and, and it was that, I would be like, yeah, it's whatever. But because they made you sit and listen to the entire song, First, they teased it. First, at the very beginning, they teased it for like two minutes. And I even, Nick turned to me and said something like, wasn't expecting them to end it there. And I said, I'm really glad they did because I couldn't take two minutes of that. And then later on, she does an entire song and it's supposed to be this really grand moment. But I was gonna say the third act breakup, right? It's that trope. And I was like, it came really late in Better Off Dead where it was kind of thrown in at the end and it was fine. It didn't, you know, add or subtract from the movie. In this movie, they put it at like the beginning of the second act. And it's just, the whole second act they did is- that In the last movie, they didn't sing the theme song until like the, I don't know, two thirds of the- Yeah, but the whole, he has to get his girlfriend back thing is what I'm talking about. Oh. Cause like, then remember they have to do these, like, so he can, oh, by the way, John Cusack in this movie is an artist. In the last movie, he was an artist. Anybody who didn't know any better would assume that these were sequels, but they're also not sequels. Maybe they couldn't get some of the rights to make a sequel for the first one, but that doesn't make sense because almost everything about the production is the same. Uh, I need to know more. I'm fascinated now. I knew I would run dry like at the end of the, just because this movie had like, I don't know, like it wouldn't continue the, the, the progression of the scene until after it had shown you something completely off path. And then it would come back to these things like intermittently. That was incredibly concise. <laughs> that is. I tried. Yes, that is the problem. It kept just wandering off the path and you're going, why? Why is it? And things were thrown in, like, why is Demi Moore... She needs to do a concert to get her grandma's house back. Then at the end of the movie, she falls back in love with him because John Cusack is an artist. That's where I was going with that. John Cusack's an artist, and he starts, you know, uh, making flyers because she's ignoring him for her concert. And she's like, no one's going to come. And then everybody comes, even the bad guy. And I made a note about Bobcat putting a flyer on the door of the bad guy's house who's trying to steal her grandmother's house. Why would you give him an invitation to the fundraiser for her to get her house back? Right. It doesn't make any sense, Nick. It makes zero sense. So anyway, he shows up. That makes even less sense. He comes to the party. He stands in the background. He seems like he's enjoying it. He brings his grandfather, the one with the cigar uh, who threw it in Godzilla's mouth. And the grandfather seems like he's having a good time. Uh, he doesn't contribute much other than just being in every scene up until the end. Uh, and spoiler alert, 
the grandfather ends up being uh, the grandfather ends up being the one who just oh so let's talk about the the guy go ahead the guy okay so there's this guy that's trying been trying to call this radio station to win a contest for like years. yeah he I, th- I just labeled him the crazy uncle I think he was somebody's uncle yeah and he's trying to win this uh, he's trying to win a million dollars so yeah and I thought the million dollars was gonna have something to do with them. Because they're doing, like, the whole movie, they're trying to get money to save the grandmother's house. And I thought the million dollars was going to come into play, where, like, he'd win the million dollars and then be able to pay off the mortgage or, like, the mortgage or whatever. That doesn't happen. Uh, what happens is, so, after the, the club scene, Demi's, um, she's dancing, or, or, no, she's singing, she's singing, she doesn't dance. She's singing, and then John Cusack is collecting money from people, and I turned to Nick, and I was like, does... Does John Cusack, does he work at this place? Because if you have an artist playing in your venue, um, people don't just like give money to anybody except for the people who work there, right? But they needed a scene that John Cusack had a bunch of money in his hand to show the audience who they probably knew were stupid. Because I, I mean, I don't, anybody who paid to see this movie, oh, Nick, you paid to see this movie. I'm sorry. Yes, I did. How much was it? I think twelve ninety nine. Oh, that's not too bad. Uh, you didn't see the theaters, so they did, at least they didn't get you for the popcorn. They have to show John Cusack with the money, but they, there's no logical reason for John Cusack to be holding a bunch of money. But they, they have a scene where he's like, yeah, and then you see the bad guys in the background, and they're like, Rrr. it doesn't matter because the bad guys just foreclose on the house, even though they gave her a, like a time limit. They were like, oh, it's too late. You can't. Uh, it's actually the Asian guy. Uh, he was, like, I guess, the bank guy. Yeah. That's how he tied into that. She's like, uh, yeah, I'm like selling you your grandmother's house back, even though you've got the right amount of money and the right amount of time. Uh, legally, I don't think you can so do that. So we skipped the part where the, where the crazy radio guy falls through his window, and then... Totally forgot about that. I, yeah. I did skip that. because uh, I have seven pages of notes for this. Yeah, the crazy guy. He's throughout this whole movie. Crazy Uncle Frank. Crazy. Um, oh, there's a, one of the other friends has a. I totally forgot about the crazy ranger. The ranger who works at this uh, munitions store who has his son run out into artillery range on the island as well. And when they, the guy, when they meet one of the friends, he's literally picking up shells on the beach and the shell is the joke and it wasn't funny because I knew what was going to happen um, as soon as they, they you know it wasn't funny so he's picking up shells on the beach uh, and artillery is going off and uh, that was like <sighs> I feel like this movie is four hours long and it's not it's like a what I think it's a cool like two hours ten minutes not even two hours probably like an hour of <laughs> it feels so long. All right. So much happened, and we're not even... Ugh. Anyway. Yeah, so the, Uncle Frank, he's on the phone. He's trying to get the million dollars. Right. And then, how did he fall out the window? He, he fell out the window because he got frustrated, I think, the first time. But, yeah. When he wins the contest, that's a sex separate thing. So, yeah. And then... <laughs> Why did he fall out the window the first time? I'm curious because I can't really remember. I don't know either. Why, nothing in this movie stuck with me. I'm really lucky that I got any words into this podcast. I'm literally going to have to cut out like minutes of silence of me and Nick just pondering on each other about <laughs> what actually happened in this movie. Man, go see this movie. It's, you know what? It's so bad that it kind of needs to be looked at. A great example of taking a concept that worked perfectly for what it was once. You can't do it twice. I'm you sure know. it was great when people went to see it in the theater. They're like, oh, this is cool. It's party, man. I don't and think like, anybody who saw this in the theater were paying attention to what they were watching. Oh, if you're just like a kid, maybe it's probably funny. Maybe. But it's too adult. It's it, it, it's at least a PG-13. It was kind but of, no, there's no, moments of kind no, of it's dumb, like chi- dumb It's shit. childlike yeah. at times, but childlike. not in a funny way. You can be silly. And they again, they did it in Better Off Dead with the same people. What happened? Well, Bobcat came in. By the way, Bobcat, uh, not very funny for most of this movie. He had one good scene with Godzilla. And then they spend a bunch of time. By the way, there's a boat race at the end of this. Uh, I don't even care how we get there. Uh, something about the, the, the bank won't let the... They oh, have to win the great. trophy. 
I love the boat race. You know what? If they had cut out the entire middle of this movie and they just hit with like a one hour movie uh, that featured like a really long boat race at the end, I'd have been okay. But instead... They should have been like shooting fireworks at each other and stuff. And yeah, like, they could have had like, you know, they could have really dragged it out. They could have built... Uh, they could have cut half the cast. Again, we had f- at least four comic relief characters. Uh, Better Off Dead had one main comic relief sidekick. This one has f- four or five. I can't even remember. And don't need to know their stories. One of the guys, his uncle, is the, uh, yeah, the artillery guy. Uh, the other guy has a grandmother that like, oh, the f- grandmother charges them to cook them dinner. It yeah. was, oh, that wasn't even that wasn't even one of the friends' grandmothers. That was the grandmother of Demi Moore. Oh, by the way, Demi did Moore did that dog end up peeing on the guy oh, buried in the God, sand? I forgot about the dog and the little girl. There's a there's an evil little girl, but she always comes in to like save the day, and we're supposed to like her, but she's like this uh, little redhead girl, and she's I mean, the, the the actress is just not. I guess she's fine, but it's really weird. It takes you out of the movie every single time. At the very, very beginning, there's a scene where these two mean girls are making faces. And the teacher says, if you make a face like that, you could step that way. Uh, which I've been told as a kid. And of course, like you believe it and you stop making the face. But it's not true. Well, the little girl comes up behind them while they're making faces at kids and pats them on the back. And of course, their faces get stuck that way. Which was horrific. Yes. See, it's the problem with this movie. There's too much. It's just too much. I just can't remember certain parts. It happened at the very beginning. And then they, those girls showed up again on the boat. I like vaguely remember a red-headed girl, but that's it. Well, she keeps showing up whenever like they need to get out of trouble. So, because uh, she's like violent. She's a violent little red-headed girl. And I can't remember why she keeps showing up on the island either. I, I, I don't want you to talk about any of these people. None of these people are conducive to the plot. The plot. Plot's very simple. Plot is simple. The rest of the movie's complicated. And it doesn't need to be. Because it it makes it so hard to watch, you know? It's like, there's a lot of bits, but not enough of them are funny for me to be like, ah. It's, it does not give me, like, what was uh, what's that one movie? Uh, uh, Leslie Nielsen. Naked Gun, Naked Gun, Naked Gun, Naked Gun. It's Naked Gun. gun. It's Naked we have gun. to stop the podcast to look up Naked Gun, and I feel ashamed. Naked Gun works... Because even though it has these silly side things going on, every silly thing is still driving the plot. He's still going through the movie like it's a regular, and that that one's like an action style. And I think that's what worked about Better Off Dead, is it's just being like your uh, typical 80s romantic comedy, but it's shoving in funny little gags along the way. This one is just trying too hard. It's trying way too hard to just be funny. And it's like, you're not telling a a cohesive story. I would feel uncomfortable in any situation in this entire movie. There's no, like, safe haven. And I don't... Exactly. There's no character that I can latch on to. for John Cusack, and I was kind of disappointed in John Cusack that he... He's not a good person in this movie. No. He's not... Again, you want a main character. You want... In the first one, John Cusack wasn't the best main character, but the French girl made up for it because she was uh, she was fun to watch. She was she had a good screen presence and she had good chemistry with John Cusack. So we wanted them to both succeed. Demi Moore is a, she's a block of wood through this whole movie. She is not interesting. I don't want to get to know her character. She's just this quirky pixie girl. You know what I mean? Like, she's the girl, she's, I'm different. I'm not like the other girls. That's her character. She's the I'm not like the other girls character. Right. That's a good way of putting it, actually. And that's fine, but you have to have a personality to back up your individuality. And she does have a personality, but it seems like she just hacks it into existence. Yeah, it's not, it's not fun it's not, to spend time with her. It's it's this, this whole movie, is and she's kind of, not a good singer, and I can't stress that enough. When this, this and it's movie, probably this a movie dumb. is an anomaly. It's one of the worst movies I've seen like this year. Not like going out of my way to watch horrible movies. Like I said, I wanted this movie to be entertaining. I had bad feelings before we watched it that it was going to be bad, and I don't know why. But I, then I was like, no, it's probably awesome. It's got, you know, got pe- good people in it, you know? And nope, it's, I mean, at the beginning, I'm like, oh, cool, it starts with a pretty cool cartoon and things. Yeah, it does. It has the same cartoon as 
Better Off Dead, same animation style. This cartoon actually was a little uh, better than the one from Better Off Dead, but then they go into this thing. That was it. The rabbits. They keep equating bad people to these rabbits. And John Cusack is a, I, I totally, my, my brain totally just thought this was part of Better Off Dead. This was part of Fly F1 Crazy Summer. Cause this was an actual, the animation in the little cartoons is good, um, but the metaphor that the rabbits are the rich people on the island and the rhino is not. First off, rabbit and rhino, um, that is not, those aren't animals that you would see together. It doesn't make sense. Uh, so I guess he's the rhino and he needs to find true love. And the true love is a princess. This is all the animation. Uh, the true love is a princess, but she's a she's a, a woman princess. Again, even the part of the movie that I liked was nonsensical and kind of derivative of the plot. All right, so we're just gonna skip right ahead to the boat race. I'm done with this movie. Uh, <laughs> and if I could have at this point just skipped to the end, I would have. So that's what I'm gonna do right now because I have the power. There's a boat race. They need to get a trophy. Somehow the trophy is gonna save the grandmother's house. Just go with it. So they need to find a motor. They have a whole boat building montage. They build a boat with the girl, just like how they built the car with the girl in the last movie. They built a boat with Demi Moore in this movie because the same movie just reskinned. The sailing happens. It's sailing day. We're skipping right ahead to sailing day. Um, and they named the boat. I even I made a note about it. They named the boat. The boat. Very clever, guys. I hate this movie. They named it the boat. And then, uh, yeah, I literally have written in my notes because I was so excited to get to this point. It says, fucking boat race. <laughs> Nick, talk about the boat race. Okay, so the only thing I know is they boat racing, boat racing, we're racing a boat. Oh my god. And then. Uh, there was. And then they. The, this there was a opponent, song dance. This opponent boat. I don't know, they get up to him, they're like, oh, they're closing in on us. And so they shoot like something at him and it brings yeah, down. Yeah, I have. Because I, I thought the, the, the bad guy. The father of Biff in this movie, I thought he was pulling out a crossbow to shoot John Cusack, and I think that's what it was implied. Yeah, they pulled out. He pulled out a crossbow and he shot down. He's their, like, "I'll do it myself." Sails. They shot down their sails, yeah. and then their boat gets messed up even worse. And then John Cusack, you said Bobcat got a fucking a uh, a another motor for their boat. Yo, so. The motor came from Biff's car. Remember at the beginning I said Biff loves his car? Well, Biff and his buddies beat up Bobcat's brother, who is his twin that doesn't look like him. And so Bobcat, in a fit of rage, and I did like, I liked that part. They, Bobcat, in a fit of rage, destroys this guy's, we didn't even figure out what kind of car it was. Uh, it wasn't a Camaro in this one. Might as well have been. I think it was like a what kind of car was that. It was like Mustang, a, I think it was like a Ferrari. Ferrari, sure. I don't know. I don't know cars. Uh, probably a Ferrari. They take the mo oh, yeah, I think that is what it was because they took the motor from the Ferrari and they put it in the boat. But they didn't just put the motor in the boat, did they, Nick? They put the entire back of the car into the boat, yep. which makes no sense. That's not how motors work i mean i guess they wanted the sting of like the this guy going that's my car i hope you're enjoying the shaking non podcast shaking anyway. on shaking on shaking on they shaking beat on. the race they beat the race and uh because of the motor from the guy's car even though there's by the way there's not just them in the race it's not just the rich guys versus uh the down and on their luck guys featuring john cusack there's other people in this race and several times during this race they mess with each other's boats to the point where they can no longer move there's no way either of them win this race is what i'm saying this movie right. yeah okay. well but they do win but they do win. <laughs> and you know what happens they try to trade the trophy for i guess the deed to the mom's house or they should have been disqualified for using a ferrari a ferrari motor. motor in a boat by the way yeah there's probably regulations and first off these are very rich people if there's a better motor that they could have put into the rich people's boats they would have they would have better boats it doesn't matter if you chop up a guy's car and put it in the back the other guy's boat was made to be a boat get it so they win the race and it doesn't matter 
the, they're like, we're just gonna take the trophy, and they do. But then, the old guy I brought up earlier, the one in the wheelchair, the one that threw the cigar in Godzilla's mouth, the one that also came to the party where Demi Moore sung badly, he decides he's, he's just going to give them the house back and not invest in the hotel because of the power, and I'm not making this up, of friendship. He said, this friendship is what this island needs. I wrote in quotations, this movie does not care. It really doesn't. It's, that's, I couldn't have put it better, Sean. And that's, and that's how the movie, well, that's basically how the movie ends. There's one more with the crazy guy with a million dollars. What happens, Nick? What happens in the last scene of the movie? It's the crazy guy with a million dollars? Yep. He's trying to win a million dollars. What happens? Oh, yeah, that guy. Okay, so the crazy guy that's been calling the radio station for years on end gets through and he wins a million dollars. And he gets really excited and freaks out and pulls the phone cable out of the wall. Now he's screwed. And I guess he's, he's contrived a rocket to shoot at the radio station if, if you know things ever got ridiculous or whatever you know by the way a, a, a military rpg probably sells for so he's had it and he presses the, you know the red button and the, the, the missile goes and blows up the radio station and that's like the end of the movie that's doing the credits roll yep i guess there's closure oh yeah there's some everybody gets like a wrap up who cares <laughs> this movie's bad nick nick and sean podcast sometimes we're gonna review bad uh, movies, sometimes we're gonna review good movies. Sometimes we're not gonna review movies, we're gonna talk about other things. We might talk about salt and pepper for two hours. I have, uh, I, I could talk about salt and pepper for about two hours. Nick, have you ever seen, you will save it for another podcast. Nick, wrap it up. Shaking on podcast, 2009, thank you. Thank you.